back to my channel. So for this week's video, I have a um, special one for you. It is a, a DIY tufted bench out of a drop cloth and one by twos. This is actually one of my very first custom made pieces that's not actually like a recycled, upcycled piece. This project was more of a use all of the excess materials that I have left over from other projects project. Basically, I had a bunch of materials left over aside from the one by twos from other projects and I wanted to use it up. And what really inspired this project in the beginning was this big piece of plywood that I had left over from a project, from another project. So I wanted to use that up and it was kind of the perfect size for a bench. So I created design plans and building plans to fit around the scrap piece of wood that I had. Now with every project, especially DIY projects, there are things that happen that you do not plan for. So just a little disclaimer, this is not 100% a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create this, but if you want to follow along and recreate it, I will link the plans below and you can check those out if you want to do that. But without further ado, let me show you how I did it. So as I said, I had a piece of leftover plywood and I had leftover mattress topper foam that I got from Walmart. This is from another project. So I ended up having to piece together a few pieces to make a second layer of foam. I'm creating buttons for the tufting. I got this button kit from Joann's and I tried to originally tuft it with the drop cloth material, but it's just too thick. So I ended up taking a scrap piece of fabric that was thinner and creating the button out of that fabric. The instructions for making buttons come with the kits. If you want, I can create a tutorial on how to create buttons, but it's pretty self-explanatory on the back of the box. Once my scrap fabric was on there, I ended up hot gluing the actual fabric that I wanted to show on top. So I got these upholstery needles from Joann's and this extra strong upholstery thread. The color of the thread doesn't matter. Now, if you're like me and your staple gun is not the highest quality staple gun and it does not tack down the thread tight enough, I ended up using a hammer to hammer it down to hold the thread.
Okay guys, so now I am starting to work on the whole base of the bench. And I have to admit, I am a little bit out of my comfort zone. I'm not sure <laughs> how to do this. I've never built something from scratch aside from that. This, I have plans made up. Um, this is the top view of the base. I'm gonna have supports for, you know, people sitting on it. And it's going to, this is the side view on the width side and this is the long side side view. Again, there are links in the description to the plans that I created for this. It's um, far better quality than my drawings. <laughs> so the bench base is built out of one by twos exclusively. Once I got all of the wood cut, I started drilling my pocket holes. Some reason this stripped up here so it won't tighten down and when I tried to tighten it down it split the wood so obviously that's not ideal um, what I ended up having to do was just cut a new piece of wood detach everything and put in the new piece of wood Okay guys, so I'm kind of in a pickle at this moment. I, this bench is not super stable. It just shifts. <sighs> so this is the moment where it broke me. It's not like I came up with this design by myself. I did a ton of research, mostly on Pinterest, and I found that a ton of people using this same materials and same kind of design. The open four post, like very open box-like base. The only thing that I changed was my dimensions. I did not understand why it was so wobbly. Pinterest said it would work. This. You sit on a throne of lies. Why do people have to lie to you on Pinterest? I don't understand. It could be me. It could be my fault. I, I'm not going to just blame these people um, for it not working, but I'm just gonna say maybe their bench was not as stable as the pictures made it look because... So, to try to get this to work, I ended up doubling up the boards on the base to try to hopefully make it stronger. doubled up the boards at the bottom I don't think it helped enough I mean I I noticed it was a little bit more stable but not as much as I needed it to be so I went to Instagram and if you follow me there you would have seen the saga of this last week and a bunch of people sent such helpful advice um, and I you know just decided to try them all so the first one that I tried was L brackets along the top of the bench base It was more stable, but not enough. It was still pretty wobbly. So I decided to add more cross braces at the bottom and the sides. Okay. 
Okay, this is where I'm at right now. I have added so many cross braces, I don't even know. <sighs> I added the front cross braces, the back cross braces. I added two cross braces on the bottom. I already had the three on the top for the bench base. And it was still a little bit wiggly um, this way, totally solid this way. So I added a diagonal cross brace here. Um, it's not, you know, the best quality because I have a handsaw. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I did this one because I did this one off camera because I did not know what I was doing. A lot of people on Instagram suggested that I do the X brace. I'm not gonna do a full X brace just because it's really difficult to do all of this without a nailer and an actual miter saw, but yeah. Let me show you how I made the diagonal piece. So this is how I cut the piece to the custom size that I needed it to be. I'm not gonna go into a full tutorial of how I did this. If you would like a full tutorial on how to create a diagonal cross piece, let me know and I'll make that a separate video for you. Letting you know, I filled it in with wood filler, sanded it, now comes the fun part of staining it. So for the stain, I ended up using a custom mix of stain. I used golden oak and special walnut from Minwax. I ended up using a three to one ratio, three parts golden oak to one part special walnut. dried I ended up sealing it with a coat of polycrylic. I also did not show this but I just same process that I do all the time seal it with one coat of polycrylic. And then came the time to attach it all together. So first I drilled in a pilot hole just so I didn't strip or split the wood. And then I took a countersink drill bit and I drilled a little pocket in the wood for the screw to nestle in so it wouldn't show when the bench was upright. Granted, that would have been useful earlier in the project, I realize I got this at this stage of the project and not before. If I were to build it again, I would probably use the countersink drill bit on most of the stuff. what it looks like all finished. Hope you enjoyed it i hope it inspires you to try it of your own i am super happy with how it came out and i know that the final shots were a little bit rough i am currently trying to make over our master bedroom because it's just kind of a little sad right now um and it's been sad for forever it's kind of the room that i don't look at because it's just eh. so i'm currently trying to make that over and i'm waiting for our new bed frame to come in and i'm going to set that up and do a little mini DIY for that. So look out for that next week. All of this was just a random rabbit trail to tell you that I'm sorry that the final shots weren't like premium shots and like everything went together, but it's kind of like a work in progress and um, I'll do a final room reveal when I get everything done. But anyway, I hope you guys all have amazing weeks and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys. Bye.